Hello, everybody. Elon here. We've got a special presentation of Keeping Carlson for you today. Yes, I know. A podcast on Sunday morning. That's weird. Normally, Elon and Brian record on Sunday nights. We release on Monday morning. Well, of course, this is the long weekend. So the next actual full episode of Keeping Carlson will be in still a couple of days. But in the meantime, one of the great friends of the show, Dave Benton, has released his season premiere of the amazing Stream Scheme podcast, the podcast all about looking at the schedule and deciding which players you want to add or drop to optimize the number of games you'll get in the following week. And we figured, why not give a little taste of what you can get if you subscribe to the Stream Scheme podcast by dropping that season premiere in our podcast feed right now. So that's what we're doing for this episode. I'm going to finish off my little intro right here. Before I do that, though, if you'll indulge me for just a moment, I'll mention a couple of things. First of all, our Keeping Carlson patron community is booming right now. We would love for you to be a part of it if you're interested in hanging out with some of the brightest minds in the fantasy hockey world. Right now, you know, it's, we're still the beginning of October. You know what that means. You could subscribe to become a patron of Keeping Carlson over at keepingcarlson.com slash patron. Try it out for all of October. You won't even get charged. You could always cancel before November. We just really are confident that you're going to have a good time if you become a patron of Keeping Carlson and join our Discord patron community. So I wanted to throw that out there as something that you may want to consider. Of course, also with the season upon us, that means that we're going to be just churning out the Keeping Carlson content, right? You've already gotten a couple of short shifts episodes. Brian and I, of course, will be pumping out those main shows every Sunday night. We might also have some more bonus episodes such as this sprinkled in throughout the next few months. So just make sure you're subscribed to Keeping Carlson on whatever device or app you use to listen to your podcast. Make sure you're going to get everything. So yes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, we're everywhere, right? Just search for Keeping Carlson and subscribe to make sure that you're going to get every single episode. Okay, one last thing, uh, a little side project of mine is I've been working on on game day lines that twitter account where we tweet out all of the line combinations i don't know if you know we also have a website for that at gamedaylinetweets.com and uh, it's up and ready to go so there are some other websites you can go to to get the latest lines but ours is the only one that basically takes you right to the source because when you go to a team and you want to see their latest line combos we just show you the tweets of from the beat writers saying who's been playing with who so you don't have to think about okay is this up to date uh what's the source can i trust it yeah go to gamedaylinetweets.com and you'll be guaranteed to see the most up-to-date lines tweeted out by those beat writers so okay that's probably enough rambling from me so without further ado i'm ready to cut over to the season premiere of The Stream Scheme with Dave Benton. I think you're really going to like this episode. Enjoy The Stream Scheme! Ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready for some fantasy hockey streaming advice, it's time for the most styling, profiling, wheeling and dealing, jet flying, limousine riding, Podcast in all the land. It's the reigning, defending, undisputed fantasy hockey streaming champion of the world. It's the stream. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to the greatest fantasy hockey podcast that focuses on streaming players for the upcoming week. It's the Stream Scheme. We won't be talking about your superstars like your Connor McDavid's or your Leon Dreisaitl's. No sorry, Bob. Here we get down to the nitty gritty, the dark depths of fantasy hockey that those other podcasts are too scared to to touch. The stream scheme is presented by the greatest fantasy hockey podcast in the world, Keeping Carlson, and we often refer to the toughest league in the world, the Keeping Carlson Ultimate Patron Fantasy League, aka the Cupful. And so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we made it. Hockey is back, baby! Come on! Let's go! Who do you think you are? I am! And, and sure, drafting is great, but there's something about picking up streamers again that just lets me know okay the off season is over it's freaking go time baby and this is what i believe may be our first ever normal stream scheme weekly episode that actually takes place before the season because for the past few years in most leagues they've combined the first two weeks into one long opening matchup but this year since we have some games starting on tuesday since we're only missing out on just monday the first week's matchup is an abbreviated one 
As such, I will not let you, the loyal Stream Scheme listener, out in the cold. If you're in a league like the Cupful where you have unlimited ads before next week officially starts on Monday, then you could certainly benefit from a little streaming advantage. Perhaps you can sneak out a win against a better team this week just because they're wanting to keep their last couple draft picks on their roster, even though they might only play something like once this week. Not you, the loyal stream schemer who is already in full stream scheme mode. Here's the plan, everybody. We're going to use our unlimited ads to get people who play early in week one, preferably on Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest. And then we can use our weekly ads to drop those guys after their early games and gain an even bigger advantage by adding guys who play on Thursday, Friday, and or Sunday. And if you're new here, don't worry. You'll get the hang of it in no time. And also, if you're new here, hey, congratulations on adding one of the best fantasy hockey tools to your fantasy hockey tool belt the stream scheme here's how it works here on the stream scheme we give you 10 streamers each week five regular forward streamers three regular defensive streamers one shallow league streamer and one ludicrous streamer here's how we break down the rostered percentage which is slightly changed this year a regular streamer is someone who's rostered on espn or yahoo leagues at 25 percent rostered or less this is a slight increase from previous years in which we did 20 percent or less and Listen, I'm not doing it to make it easier on myself. I mean, we call it a win for the week if I hit on at least five out of my 10 streamers, which I was 12 and three last year. And keep in mind, that's with three defensive streamers each week. So, I mean, if anything, I should be making it harder on myself. But really, it's more about just not picking the same guys too much. Perhaps it was due to the weird COVID scheduling last year, but it felt like some teams just always had good schedules and some teams never did. So I was picking a lot more guys uh more frequently than I should to hope so hopefully to avoid that uh, that's why I increased it up to 25% just trying to keep it fresh for you guys so hopefully you agree with that for a shallow league streamer that will be guys that are rostered at 35% or less typically these are guys who will probably be available in shallow leagues such as leagues that have like 10 teams in them or less in competitive deeper leagues like the cup full which have a lot of people who are very interactive and 14 people in them odds are these guys are already on a team but we don't want to cater just to those you know deep competitive leagues so one streamer a week is dedicated to those shallow leagues but if those guys are available in your competitive leagues hey all the better and lastly a ludicrous streamer is someone that is two percent or less rostered so just like we always want to throw out a streamer for those shallow leagues we also want to throw out a streamer for those deep deep leagues you know the ones that like people always like to brag about they're in a i'm in a 22 team league with 25 man rosters and yada yada stuff like that those streamers are for those people most of the time even in a competitive 14 team league uh the ludicrous streamers are typically still available on waivers and also, just in case I forgot, uh, a streamer is a player that you pick up from the waiver wire slash free agent pool, whatever you want to call it. You pick up that player for a certain set amount of time. It could be for a single day, a week, or a different set of time, like kind of how a ton of people will be streaming Jeff Carter until whenever Sidney Crosby gets back in the lineup. Then after that certain amount of time if that player has a bad schedule coming up or didn't produce for us we're completely okay with dropping that player for another one you're streaming players in and out of your roster and that should give you a games played advantage over a manager who simply isn't doing that the guys on their roster stay on their roster and they only add players for like an injury or someone really isn't producing basically it's gaining an advantage in weekly matchups over managers who are either one lazy or just simply not paying enough attention or two are stubborn enough to think that no players on their team are replacement level odds are if you think every single player on your roster is too good to be streamed you're probably lying to yourself somewhere it's kind of like the old adage if you can't spot the sucker at the table then you are the sucker but enough pitter patter let's get at her since we have no picks to review obviously we're going to go straight to the schedules for the upcoming week starting on monday october 11th 2021 and yeah i know there's no games on the 11th but I always just say what week it is based on the Monday, so deal with it. Monday, obviously, we have no games. Four teams playing on Tuesday for opening night. Ten teams playing on Wednesday. 
18 teams playing on Thursday, 6 teams play on Friday, 28 teams play on Saturday, and just 2 teams play on Sunday. And so just for a quick recap, if anyone's new, why the number of teams playing on a given day is important. If 18 teams or more are playing on a given day, that's always going to be a busy day. That means more than likely any streamers you pick up will have a tough time cracking your starting lineup on that day. If 12 teams or fewer are playing, that's always going to be a slow day. That means that any streamers that you pick up to play on those days should have no problem cracking your starting lineup. If it's 14 teams to 16 teams playing, that's the gray area. It depends on your team whether if you'll be able to fit in streamers or not. So for our purposes, we do include those days for streaming purposes, but always check your lineup on those 14 to 16 team days to make sure that it will work out for your team. And so the best schedule for week one goes to the Vancouver Canucks. They play three times this week, which is the most of any teams. They play on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So that's two off day games in there. And those games are going to be against Against Edmonton, Philadelphia, and Detroit. So obviously it's possible that this might mush them into a low scoring week. So I apologize in advance, Canucks fans. But hey, as far as we know right now, that's the best schedule with the best opponents for week one. Some other teams that have good schedules for this shortened week are the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Montreal Canadiens, the New York Rangers, the Ottawa Senators, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and the Seattle Kraken. The worst schedule of the week is the St. Louis Blues. They only play one time on the super busy day of Saturday. And in that one game, they're on the road against one of the best teams in the league in the Colorado Avalanche. So obviously we are avoiding Blues this week. Some other teams that have bad schedules this week are the Boston Bruins, the Calgary Flames, the New Jersey Devils, the Philadelphia Flyers, and the San Jose Sharks. All those teams only play one time this week. So we will obviously be avoiding guys from those teams this week. And if you have a fringe guy on any of those teams with bad schedules, I would say drop them for one of our streamers. So without further ado, let's get to the picks of the week. We'll start out by giving you our regular forward streamers in order that I like them for that week, followed by our defensive streamers, also in order that I like them for that week. And then I'll give the shallow league streamer and obviously the ludicrous streamer of the week. And we'll recap all the picks at the end if you're short on time and just want the freaking picks. So first up, my top forward streamer pick of the week is an easy one. It's Tyler Johnson of the Chicago Blackhawks. He is somehow only rostered in just 16% of Yahoo leagues right now. And ladies and gentlemen, if you do the math at home, that equals out to be about 84% of complete clan leagues right now. How are those leagues? So blind. Tyler Johnson has been getting what we in the streaming biz like to refer to as primo deployment. That means he is getting that top line, top power play treatment there in the Windy City. But he's just not dust in the wind. Oh, no. He's been top line, top power play all freaking preseason long. Not only that, but he's got Patrick Kane to the right of him. Alex DeBrincat to the left of him. And he's stuck in the middle of a great fantasy hockey situation. Can you feel me? Now, of course, all that can be filed under, yeah, but it's still the preseason, and I cannot argue with you there. It is true no regular season games have been played. You got me there. But unless somehow that line just completely poops to bed, you've got to at least ride with Tyler Johnson for this week when, oh yeah, not only everything that we already talked about, but Chicago also has one of the best schedules this week playing on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So that's two off day games, three games total against the Avs, the Devils, and the Penguins. Only one tough team defensively in there, so I'll take it. This one is an absolute no-brainer of a streamer and hopefully can turn into a season-long hold. Freaking pickup. Tyler Johnson or you are banned from listening to this show if he's not available in your league well at least take solace in the fact that you're not in a clown league at least my second forward streamer pick this week is Kasperi Kapanen of your Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm very bullish on Kapanen this week. For those who don't know, my favorite and hometown team are the Pittsburgh Penguins. And while I'm not a huge homer, they are the only team that I can actually stand watching preseason games of. And sure, like we said, take preseason games with a grain of salt, if you will. But I'll tell you what. 
I'll tell you what. Kapanen's looking good. He's looking crisp. He's looking ready to go. Now, does he look like he's worth a 15th overall pick in the NHL draft? Is besides the point, you jerk. The point is, my man Kasperi Kapanen might be ready to have himself a season. Now, let's not go nuts here when I say he might be ready to have himself a season. I mean, like, his ceiling is like 60 points, so cool your jets. But still... With the injuries the Pens have, Kapanen finds himself on the top power play in Pittsburgh for at least two weeks. And even when Crosby comes back, I'm willing to bet that it's Jeff Carter who finds himself as the odd man out on that power play, not Kapanen. But that's just a little inside info here from your favorite Yinzer. Kasperi Kapanen is rostered in just 18% of Yahoo leagues right now. Pittsburgh has one of the better schedules of this week, playing on opening night on Tuesday and then also on Thursday and Saturday. So only one off night game, but at least you get three games in there if you can fit them in. And those busy days, they play Florida and Chicago. So hopefully there will be some points to be had in those games. So pick up Kasperi Kapanen. <laughs> My third forward streamer for this week is Jonathan Druin of the Montreal Canadiens. Obviously, Druin was out late last year dealing with some mental health issues, but everything seems to be pointing towards him being fully back with no restrictions heading into this year. And if anything, dare I say, he might even be in the best shape of his career. Fool this man! I know, I know. And, and, and even if he is the best Drewen ever, he still never got more than 53 points uh, in a season back in Tampa in 16-17. But again, that's why... He- Drewen is a streamer and not like a guy you roster all the time. If you're someone like me and you're just trying to keep the ship afloat until a certain, I don't know, best hockey player in the world comes back from wrist injury, someone like Drewen is a great fit. He's multi-eligible at center and left wing. You always love to see that. And believe it or not, Ducharme actually has been keeping the lines relatively consistent at training camp. Their top two lines ever since the Hoffman injury haven't changed at all. Um, And the second line in Montreal seems to be Drouin, Dvorak, and Anderson. Love, love, love that line. Such a sneaky, good, underrated line. Please do not mess this up for me, Ducharme. Ducharme pulled a bunch of stunts on us last year. A lot of stunts. For a while, I swore off just streaming Habs in general because of Ducharme. And then he just went and took the Habs all the way to the cup finals. Worst case scenario, if you ask me, if I'm a Habs fan, you come so close to the cup and lose. And then that run ensured that Ducharme was going to sign an extension. Uh, Brutal. But hey, maybe now he's the coach uh, for the whole season. Maybe that'll mean he won't shake up the lines as much. And maybe that he'll actually play his best players the most and also play his best players on the top power play. Uh, I digress. The point is that Jonathan Drouin is in a great spot for the Canadians right now. And the Canadians have a good schedule this week, playing three times on Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday against the Maple Leafs, the Sabres, and the Rangers. So pretty good opponents there. He's only rostered in just 15% of Yahoo leagues right now. So pick up Jonathan Drouin. My fourth forward streamer pick this week is Niels Hoaglander of the Vancouver Canucks. And before the pronunciation, please get on my back. Can I please get a pronunciation verification on that? Niels Hoaglander, it's time to hand out the sweets. Thank you very much for that, fellas. Hoaglander was someone who was a streamer last year for like a week. He was all right. Certainly nothing to write home about. And that's why he's still a streamer here. But he didn't have a terrible season in his COVID rookie season. About a half point per game and about two shots a game. Give him some more time on ice and a little bit better deployment. And we could see a decent uptick in production. And guess what? Right now, he's at least in line to get just that. He's currently skating on the quote unquote top line in Vancouver, skating alongside Horvat and Pearson. Now, obviously Besser being injured completely through their lines, all amok with Pedersen on the second line and Miller on the third line. What are you doing? What are you doing over there? Who knows what the lines will actually be looking like come game time, but my thought is this, that Travis Green doesn't want to mess with the chemistry of the Horvat, Hoagland, or Pearson line just because of the Besser injury. So I think that that Hoaglander line is pretty much safe. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, how much time Besser misses that 
as long as I think he at least misses that whole first week, and so I think you're going to see that Hor- Horvat, Hoaglander, Pearson line see a decent uptick on ice time. And in a week where Vancouver has the best schedule, like we talked about previously, Hoaglander is an obvious streamer pick this week. He's rostered in just 19% of Yahoo leagues right now, so pick up Niels Hoaglander. <laughs> My fifth regular forward streamer pick this week is Anthony Sorelli of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, this pick is getting back to basics. We're kicking it old school stream scheme for this one. Sorelli, he doesn't have good numbers. He's not getting power play time. He's not even necessarily on a good line. This is just a pure gut pick. I'm not going to lie to you. That's why he's down here as the last regular forward pick, but here's my reasoning. I just think Tampa Bay is going to come out hot. Typically, I think teams that go deep in playoffs fair a little bit better at the beginning of the season you got to watch out for that you know mid-season burnout of course from those teams but at least for the first week or two I think they have a step on other teams for a minute and I also think typically when that happens it's not just the superstars who eat everybody ends up eating there's always a third line or fourth line that goes bonkers for a while until they eventually cool off in a week or two and that's why I'm going Anthony Sorelli here it's just a numbers game and I'm hoping that he can get on some cheap points in some games where they might end up getting 15 goals in three games this week. It's very possible. The Tampa Bay Lightning also have one of the best schedules this week, playing on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday against the Penguins, the Red Wings, and the Capitals. So like I said, I'm putting that over under at 15 goals for Lightning for the week. So I'm just trying to get in on some of that scoring. If you want to ride old school with me, Sorelli is only 16% rostered on Yahoo right now. So if he's there, why not? Pick up Anthony Sorelli. Up next, we got some defensive streamers for you. My top defensive streamer pick this week is Adam Larson of the Seattle Kraken. And anyone who's listened to the show knows I am very partial to Adam Larson, mainly because in my train wreck of a defensive crew last year, he ended up actually being my best defender. And that's saying a lot for a guy who doesn't shoot and only got 10 points last year. But uh, needless to say, I am a fan. As far as hits and blocks go, he's maybe the best in the biz. He's a great last guy to round out your defensive crew, or even better when you can get him as a streamer like we're talking about him here. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dave, he only got 10 points on the freaking Oilers. He might be lucky to only get four points the whole season with the Kraken. And I get that, but and not only that, the Kraken is also pretty deep defensively, so Larson might not get a ton of ice time. I'll actually counter that by saying, believe it or not, he wasn't getting a ton of ice time in Edmonton either. The last two years in Edmonton, he's averaged less than 20 minutes a game. I bet that actually stays the same in Seattle and maybe even a little bit of an uptick in minutes as well. Adam Larson is rostered in just 20% of Yahoo leagues right now, and I gotta imagine But that's everyone who had him last year. (laughs) It's just ready to ride with him again like I am. Seattle has a good schedule this week, playing three times on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So if he's there, pick up Adam Larson. My second defensive streamer pick this week is Alexander Romanoff of the Montreal Canadiens. Romanoff was someone who the boys were buzzing about early last year. Not only did I pick him up right after that, I also picked him up as a streamer, I think, one more time after that, hoping that maybe with like an injury or something he could start to get minutes. But Romanoff could never get enough ice time to get those perifs to a point where he could be in like that Adam Larson type range but with Weber out and maybe another year under his belt now hopefully Romanev can finally get the minutes to make this streamer pick worth it and with the Montreal Canadiens having one of the better schedules this week as I mentioned three times Wednesday Thursday back to back and also Saturday against Toronto Buffalo and the Rangers this week eh All right, I'm willing to get hurt again on Romanov. Why not? An early season tradition, uh, maybe until one year he finally breaks out, perhaps. And am I nuts to stream two Habs after I just swore them off last year? Yeah, probably. So proceed with caution. But if you need a defensive streamer, hey, why not? He's only 10% rostered on Yahoo, so this could be the year of Alexander Romanov. My third and final defensive streamer pick this week is Ryan McDonough of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Same exact reasoning here for McDonough as it was for Sorelli, (laughs) my last forward pick there. I think it's just that the Lightning are going to score a bunch this week. Plain and simple. So I think McDonough will be able to luck his way into a couple points in addition to getting pretty good perifs as he normally does. So nothing nothing too fancy here, boys and girls. It's hard enough to pick defensive streamers 
uh, let alone before the season even starts. And every single defender with uh, even a remote chance of being good is pretty much rostered across the board. But we make no excuses here at the stream scheme. Our record will prevail regardless. So if you're in a sticky spot and need a defender with a good schedule who might get you some cheap points, why not pick up Ryan McDonough? Up next, we have our Shallow League streamer of the week. It's Jaden Schwartz of the Seattle Kraken. The Seattle Kraken have taken a lot of heat for their expansion draft, including yours truly, mainly because of how much better they could have been offensively with just a few different picks. But I'll tell you what, just because they don't look like an offensive juggernaut, do not sleep on the Kraken offense this year. And perhaps I'm just trying to speak it into existence since I do have Eberly and McCann in a lot of leagues, but I think the Kraken will surprise people offensively. Nothing crazy, but I think it's very possible that we could see that whole top line slash top power play of Schwartz, Eberly, and McCann. They could be 60-point players, which is to say they could all be very serviceable players potentially for your team the whole season long. But at the very least, they make for incredible streamers whenever we have the chance to do so. The Kraken do have one of the best schedules this week, and Jaden Schwartz is just 34% rostered on Yahoo Leagues right now. So if he's there in those shallower leagues or anywhere... Pick up Jaden Schwartz. And lastly, our ludicrous streamer of the week is none other than Evan Rodriguez from Yo Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, I already told you before about how high I am on Kasperi Kapanen this week. He's looking good. So I might as well take his line mate here, Evan Rodriguez. In case you missed it with both Crosby and Malkin out, that moved up Jeff Carter to the top line. And and on the second line, they moved up old reliable Evan Rodriguez to play with Kapanen and Zucker. And let me tell you, Rodriguez isn't terrible. I mean, ain't no Jake Gensel, but he certainly ain't no Bo Bennett either. Whatever I can get someone who's playing top six minutes and they are 0% rostered, Yeah, I'll take a chance on that for a ludicrous streamer. So if you're in a deep, deep league, take a chance on Evan Rodriguez this week. So there we have it. To recap, our streamers for the week starting on Monday, October 11th, 2021 are the following. Forward streamers, Tyler Johnson, Kasperi Kapanen, Jonathan Drouin, Niels Hoaglander, and Anthony Sorelli. Defensive streamers, Adam Larson, Alexander Romanov, and Ryan McDonough. Our shallow league streamer for the week is Jaden Schwartz. And our ludicrous streamer of the week is Evan Rodriguez. And I guess I will give a final warning that I do have four of these guys rostered this week. Uh, TJ, Kapanen, Druen, and Larson. So typically that's been a bad sign that like at least three out of those four guys won't hit. But hey, what can I say? At least I put my money where my mouth is. We'll see how it goes. I did just want to you know, kind of throw that precaution out there before you start picking up players. Good luck to everyone this week. Feel free to hit me up on the Keeping Carlson patron discord server or on Twitter at NHL stream scheme. And if you could leave us a positive review on iTunes, I will love you for the rest of time and space. So long everybody. And don't forget what the great Daniel Alfredson once said. The future belongs to those who believe in their dreams. See you.